I want to say somebody said ain't nobody coming to see Otis. You know, I've decided, I just want to say this. My new thing is, is I'm coming to see Otis. I want to see <laughs> Otis. I want to talk to you. I got some things to get off my chest. This thing says. I'm coming to see Otis. Everybody else can watch me go see him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, man. Oh, man. Okay. Well, shit. Well, let's go ahead and start it off. <laughs> <laughs> I want the smoke. Where you at? No. <laughs> Let's go, man. All right. It's the guy, DJ App. And I got my man, David Ruffin Jr. in the building, man. Uh, yours truly right now, man. Doing it real big, man. Uh, big ups, David Ruffin Jr. How you doing, family? How you doing? Uh, I am blessed and highly flavored in some cities, or so I've been told. Yes, yes, you cur yes you are, family. Yes, you are. So, um, you said you was you, you was currently you was doing um some rehearsal, right? You said you rushed home, you was doing the rehearsal. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was uh you know, H E was like, um, you gonna be good? I was like, Of course. I I am a professional. Hence I was doing ninety on the freeway from <laughs> rehearsal with Sons of Motown. So I wasn't in the car doing an interview trying to look like this. <laughs> I wanted to give you my full undivided attention. I appreciate that, family. I appreciate that. Um, so, um, you just recently came from Detroit, right? Or yeah. Uh, yesterday, <laughs> I got off the plane at four in the morning because it was three hours delayed. Woo. Went to sleep by five. Was up at nine thirty in that rehearsal by eleven. Cali Woo. time. So, and then I just came back from rehearsal again. So after rehearsal yesterday, I stopped at the studio to see the homie. He wanted to put me to work. Then I wound up doing like three or four freestyles on my live. Mm. And then, which was basically just a plug for him because he got some really, really awesome, awesome music. And I wanted to, you know, um, give him um, some, some sharpen some iron for him because iron sharpens iron. And I'm trying to lift up anybody that's one that's love. Dope and genuinely just good at what they do. And secondly, mm -hmm. that supports me. Um, you know, I, I try to return all karma tenfold. So if you hit me off with the negatives, I'm gonna hit you off with the tenfold. Mm. I'll try or I'll put it in the universe to get them. <laughs> and <laughs> if you hit me off with one positive, I'm gonna try to hit you off with ten positive. Mm. It's just a, you know, super mirror. I love, I love that. I love that, man. I love that, man. So, man, um... <clears throat> no, David Ruffin did not grow up in Houston. David Ruffin only been to Houston a couple times in his life. Maybe 10, max. So, no, I didn't grow up in Houston. I'm from Detroit. Born and raised Detroit. So, you you from Detroit? Yeah, born and raised, literally. You, you, Motown you baby. California? I'm out here. Okay. But I'm not from here. Got you, got you, got you. Got I've been you. here off and on since 90s, but no, I'm a Motown kid, and I, I will hold that torch. Even if my father wasn't David Ruffin and I was from Detroit, I'd be like, yeah, I'm from Detroit. Doesn't necessarily mean I'm from the bad side of Detroit or right. the sanctified part of Detroit. I'm just from the D. So how was that experience, man, growing up? in Detroit, you know what I mean, with a celebrity father. A lot of people don't know, you know what I mean, what the experience is like. Can you kind of share that with us, what that experience was like for you, from your point of view? <clears throat> um, well, my point of view is basically the adults that were around me growing up. You know, mm -hmm. I kind of, I kind of, I kind of um, surmised my, that my, father was an entertainer and my mom was too and that did you understand it when you were younger at the time like did you understand younger how... younger no i was just like who are all these people and why right <laughs> and why are y'all making so much noise all the time <laughs> um but eventually i you know i figured it out and you know after knowing uh all of the temptations and growing around growing up around all the temptations Mm -hmm. It started to make more sense to me as to why Pops wasn't home. Gotcha. And then when, you know, he left the Temptations, 
or was fired or whatever people wanted. Um, I was, you know, touring with them again there too, and then a reunion tour uh, as well. So, I mean, I've, I've been around it, so I did figure it out rather quickly. Um, and I didn't really get, of course, I didn't get the stardom of it. I just mm -hmm. knew he was a singer, and I knew he was in a popular group, and I knew he was in rotations, and I knew he was solo. But it didn't really, I didn't really get it probably until high school, mm. how popular he really was. Mm. But, I mean, I fell into the to role. I, I fell into the role. Um, you know, he started telling me how, you know, I had to be when we were out because of, who he was right and i was a little rambunctious so pop said do something i would just listen because he was not a joke with that belt <laughs> um, yeah they all went back in the day man they all went back in the day we all got a little bit of that you know what i mean <laughs> right you go to school and the teacher like what happened to you i got a whooping oh damn sorry to hear that <laughs> <laughs> nowadays it's oh my god i'm gonna call all of the police in the world right <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, man. So as far as like for the people, uh, for the generations now that didn't grow up in that era and for the people that just only seen the Temptation movie, was it as accurate as possible when it comes to, you know what I mean, your father? <laughs> man, man, nope. Nope. Got it. Yo, that movie was held up for... Four years. Four years. Through through wow. through my family, my sisters and I held up that for four years in litigation, oh. trying to sit and trying to make the movie not come out because okay, what it just put him in a bad light. And then after a while, you realize in most movies there's a villain, right? Who was the villain of this movie? Oh my father! Fuck you. <laughs> Like, I get it. I understand the um, the dynamics, and I understand the you got to put stuff on TV to make it, you know, on, on the screen to make it mean more. But yeah. like the whole first half, like of the movie, was basically my pops. They went to the point where like to be continued in the middle of him, yeah, and come back to him, yeah. I, you know what I hate even more than the movie, the false representation of the public especially the youth mm. about what david ruffin is and stands for right all these cats out here david ruffin this david ruffin that david ruffin this and they name and they songs out they mouth out they buttholes everywhere uh, yeah i see exactly it's annoying because they're not putting any respect on it got you they're not glorifying that he was a great dude they're glorifying that he was a fucking idiot in a movie right Right. And that he was that OG and he was that motherfucker and he was ooh, 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 ooh. Mm. But if it was they daddy, whether he was that or not, they wouldn't like it. Facts. Facts. And I don't like it. And I never have. It took me years, years to watch the whole movie. Mm. And I, there's other people in my family, my mama included, that took years like, I haven't seen Ain't Too Proud to Beg yet on purpose. So pe people keep asking me, why haven't you gone? Why won't you go? To an Ain't Too Proud to Beg event? I'm not going to any Motown event, any Ain't Too Proud to Beg event, any Temptations event, mm. any of the above without an invitation. Yeah, I know how to coattail. I know how to kick in the back door. I know how to talk to the, the man on the guest list. Easy. Right. <laughs> but until I'm invited to any of these in, these uh, events and, and, and productions, I'm going to just be as uninterested as my father would be. That's, 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 that's quite interesting. So you're telling me they haven't invited you to nothing? And they do it on purpose. Oh, let me tell you how many anniversary Motown shows there have been and I've gotten no... Let me tell you how many times they've been on TV. Let me tell you how many times they've been at the Greek. Let me tell you how many times across the globe. I don't get invited to nothing, and I know why. It's because of my father. 
It's not because I'm going to run up there and act a fool. It's because they're afraid that because I'm his son that I might just run up there and act a fool. Mm. But I wouldn't do that unless I was there and they were clowning or saying something disrespectful. Then I might. But other than that, I'm not going to do that because regardless of how dope it looked for some people to see my father in the movie go up on the stage and snatch the microphone if you're a grown up if you're an adult you know that that was based around some sort of jealousy insecurity and a whole little plethora of other things as to why he did that but one of them that was very important was unprofessional mm. drugs is a powerful it's a powerful thing drugs it's the right. drugs. It's the alcohol. My father was an alcoholic and, 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 and an addict. Bless his heart. His heart was, I mean, you know, he was a good old, like, regular Davis, Eli Ruffin, Davis. Mm. Eli Ruffin, good old boy. No problem. Humorous, fun-loving, considerate, compassionate, all that. But they don't say none of that. They don't do none of that in the movie. That's for real. That's it's right. just about, they don't, don't, don't talk about us. They don't talk about his kids. <clears throat> they don't talk about neither of his, his kids' mothers. They talk about Tammy Terrell? For what? That was a fake-ass relationship anyway. That was some Barry Gordy, Tammy Terrell, you out here wilding too much, fucking with too many people, and David Ruffin, you can't sit your ass still neither. Y'all want to date over there? You want to date over here? You motherfuckers sit right here in, in this group, in this studio, in this building at all times. Y'all want to date, date each other. Wow. That was like some made for, that was like what we see sometimes happening now where these entertainers get together and pretend they date. Propaganda, basically. Just to, well, yeah. they didn't, my, neither Tammy or my father was hip to what was going on. The label made them do that. Gotcha. And gotcha. you know, I wasn't there, but mm -hmm. over time, I've talked to enough people to know what's what what it what it more likely was. And right. I've been in the business my whole life. So I know what comes to the table. I know what kind of propositions are made. So I mean like I just didn't like that the, the movie didn't make him a little more real. Hence it ain't over. That story ain't over. <clears throat> that story ain't over. Facts. Oh wow man, you just laid out a <laughs> A whole lot of information that a lot of man people don't don't, know don't play with me. Get me on the interview. I'm I'm not I'm not I'm not. I said I want all smoke. Run it. <laughs> wow. I'm with the business. I'm that dude. Wow. <laughs> That's crazy. Let's get him. Let's get him. <laughs> wow. But you know the, the 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 funny thing is is regardless of how they tried to portray your father to be in the movie. One thing they can't deny is that voice and that nope. damn music. Nope. Because if you... Nope. You're absolutely somebody, right. You're absolutely you right. I got a song. You're is so the right. enemy or who they feel is the villain in that movie, the best motherfucker in that movie is David Ruffin. And that, I know. Without that character, know. ain't no movie. Look. Ain't no look, movie. When people, <laughs> look, look, look. When people react, reenact the movie, ain't nobody reenacting nobody's parts but <laughs> David. <laughs> Maybe Eddie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Eddie like, but man, David, it's funny ooh. how they still ain't coming to see Otis. They man. still coming. They watching the movie to see how wild boy David Ruffin was. But that's not how wild boy David Ruffin was. He was a wild boy. Got Some you. of that stuff might have been fueled by actual events. Got you. Yes. Yeah. I won't say that the movie's a complete lie. Mm -hmm. But like you said, it kind of blew it out of proportion. Yeah. It kind of made it larger than it really was. Mm -hmm. And they always—it's like a lot of things. Mm -hmm. It's like a lot of entertainers. They make it—they make their own lives bigger than they really are. There's cats out here acting like they got money and living at mama house. Right, 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 right. So that's how it be, family. But um, <clears throat> so let's fast forward and let's jump into your music career because I was. Uh, watching the interview that you had did in Detroit, and one thing that I had found out was, was in one of them interviews you did in Detroit when you had uh, showed on your Instagram Live was that you actually was the voice on Gin and Juice. And that surprised the shit out of me. Nobody, like, I'm in California. You feel what I'm saying? Like, 
I come from the hood. L.A., Eaglewood, Compton, you feel Low Beach. Oh, I just left 104th and Crenshaw. Nobody I was on 104th and Crenshaw. <laughs> nobody knows that, bro, and that's crazy to me. How, was, how did you create that classic and you got no credit for it? That is I crazy. created I created that in a in a in a in a 300 drop top on